Yeah. Yeah, I can see can all you see of my, you. Can you see my hands? Yes, I can see most of you. Let me okay, see. cool. Is that better? Can you see me better now? I can see you great. Awesome. Hey, everybody. I'm going to wait just a couple minutes and give some people some time to hop on here. I'm going to mute everybody from the background to go away. You're probably going to hear my dog bark the whole time in the background, so just ignore that screeching bark. your time nine o'clock your time we'll go ahead and get started I don't have a lot as far as pre-call super exciting information I feel like we talk every single day and I yell about success club and yell about promotions and yell about all this and yell about all that so I'm just gonna introduce Janelle um, I took the stats from the national wake-up call because she was literally just on the national wake-up call doing an amazing call for everybody so Three-time superstar diamond coach, three-time elite 10 coach, and five-time elite coach. So those stats alone just say, you know, you probably want to pay attention, take notes, and maybe listen to what she has to say just a little bit. Um, but I will let her go ahead and just dive in. I know she's got something that we can all benefit from for sure. So let me unmute you. You should be good. Okay, awesome. Can you hear me okay? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Lorena, thank you so much for having me on the call and sharing with your team. I mean, I have watched, you may not know, but I have watched some of your trainings recently and I'm just like, I have got to reach out to her. She's such a rock star and I just really agree with the way that you train on things. And so you guys, I just want you to know you're really, really lucky to have Raina. She's very intelligent. She's very business savvy. And I just, I really see that you guys have an awesome leader and I hope that you're watching all of her trainings and just really absorbing everything that she has to say all the time because she knows what she's doing. So um, some of you may or may not, you know, have ever heard my story before and I don't really want to go into a lot of that just because I feel like I've got some great content here and I want to make sure I, I get through all of it. Raina, how long do your uh, calls usually go? Yeah. You can take as well, I mean, we'll we usually go for like an hour. So, but you can take 20 minutes, 10 minutes, however, many, however long you want to take it. Okay. Okay. Well, I always aim for like 30 minutes, but I think I've never done it. So just FYI. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, you guys, I wanted to talk about attracting a dream team and you know, when you're newer in the business, I'm sure all of you are at different stages of your business. And when you're newer in the business, I feel like, at least for me, where I began was with my warm market. I wasn't even on Facebook when I started as a coach. And most definitely, my first dozen or so coaches were just people from that list of everyone that you know in your life. You know, you make that list when you're a new coach. Hopefully you did that. I made that list of everyone I've ever known in my life. It was like 100 to 200 people. My husband and I made the list together. And, um, you know, so just connecting with all of those people and being really excited about this opportunity, you know, the vast majority of them thought we were crazy and that's a pyramid scheme and all that kind of, you know, skepticism. We heard all of that, but there were just, you know, that small percentage of people that were like, that sounds pretty cool. And, you know, I, I trust you and yeah, I'll, I'll try it or whatever. So 
that is really where I got my start. And I really feel like not every coach gets their start there, but a lot of coaches get their start there. And I know you might be thinking, well, I don't have a lot of friends or family members who are in fitness. I didn't either. I, I just want to be clear on that, that these people that were joining, like my dad, so against Shakeology, um, definitely was skeptical about the business, but you know, he was just like, yeah, I'll help you out. Um, you know, so there were definitely a lot of that, a lot of those first 12 to 15 coaches that were, you know, not all in and that's okay. Like they just were willing to try something and willing to be a part of this business. And did they all stay in? Of course not, not, not at all. But I'm just saying that's what gave me my start. And so if you have not tapped into your warm market and really thought about your, your family, your friends, your relatives, your coworkers, your previous coworkers, people you went to school with, people you go to school with now, people you went to elementary school with, the people at the fire station, the, the teachers you know, the RNs you know, like everyone, then you've got to do that because there are, out of everyone that you know and have ever known in your life, and some of these people you probably haven't connected with in years, I can almost guarantee you there are enough people that would want to do this business that you could be diamond by next week. I mean, I can almost guarantee it. I know we say all the time that like Emerald is a decision. Diamond's kind of a decision too, because if you lead with that kind of excitement and are reaching out to that many people and you're that excited about this opportunity for them, you're excited for them about this opportunity. Um, I really feel like, you're kidding yourself if you don't think there's at least eight to 10 people out of everyone you've ever known in your life that would want to do a business or at least try to do a business where it's based on fitness, health, well being, and they can make an income at the same time and still do it on top of their full time job. I'm just saying. So, beyond that, though, beyond your warm market, you know, for those of you that are like almost diamond or diamond or one star. I've always said, I feel like that's a sticking point. Like that's that point where you're like, okay, I feel like I've talked to everyone I know or have ever known in my life. And now what? Like you get the sense that things are going to come to a halt unless right away as you're a new coach, you start getting into attraction marketing. Okay. You start building those or developing those attraction marketing skills and start positioning yourself right from day one so that once you're almost diamond or diamond or one star, the people that you started meeting and attracting on day one, now are suddenly understanding who you are, understanding what you do, and are being attracted to what you do and who you are, and are buying from you and joining your team. So in order to not hit that plateau that a lot of coaches hit where like I said, they hit it usually just before diamond or diamond or one star. And I've always felt like the coaches that make it to two star, which by the way, I feel like two stars where your business takes off. You get to open up your second business center and your income just starts to go boom, boom. And it's just exponentially growing. But I feel like two star is that point at which coaches get attraction marketing. Like they, they have, they've, develop more as a leader and they're, they're learning how to expand their network beyond the friends and family and, and the warm market. And it's getting really cool at that point because then you're attracting people who are really like-minded. Like you're starting to realize like your friends and family members and relatives and all them, like they maybe don't quite get you or don't quite get what this business is about. But these other cool people that you're attracting, it's like, oh my gosh, you can be PFS with them. Like you love that. I mean, not that you don't love your family and friends too, but like, it's just really cool. The people that you start attracting and meeting and you just feel like, oh my gosh, there's all these people out there who you just want to be a part. You want them to be a part of your fitness family. You love working with them. And that's the kind of team that I want you to be able to build is the type of team where like you want to hang out with these people. You guys make each other feel good. It's all positive. You empower each other. You lift each other up. You share with each other. And it's that culture that you have created. So I wanted to give you my top 10, top 10 tips on how to make that happen. Before I start, though, I'll just say real quick, just in case you don't know who I am, I, I, when I started this business, like I said, in the National Wake Up Ball, I was working full-time. I was actually working two jobs. I had a full-time job 
plus, I had taken on a secondary job. Um, and I was also on top of all that, as if I had any spare time, I taught about five fitness classes a week. So that was my little piece of fitness that I got to be involved in was teaching those fitness classes because I've always wanted to do fitness full time, but I didn't go that route. And if I were to take like a full time fitness job that I knew of, it would have been a huge pay cut for me. So I couldn't go that route. So I was just working my butt off. And I'm wishing that I had been in fitness, but I wasn't. So just doing fitness on the side, being a mom, being a wife, just crazy busy. This business opportunity came up. I went for it. And you know what I had to do? I had to make some really, really tough decisions, like quitting that secondary job. So here I was going to quit my secondary job, which meant pay cut for my husband and I quitting that secondary job. I mean, I had that secondary job for a reason. We needed the money, right? And so I had to quit that secondary job and I had to clear my plate of everything and anything else I was doing that was taking up any amount of time. Like I stopped watching TV. I stopped, you know, doing a whole bunch of other things that just weren't taking me in the right direction. And so every little minute I could work on this business, I did. So I got up earlier in the morning. I stayed up later at night and on the weekends I put in as much time as I possibly could. It got harder before it got easier, you guys. And that's the way this business goes. It's a lot of work up front when you're not making any money yet, necessarily. I wasn't. And you just keep priming that pump because eventually there's going to be this gush. There's going to be this waterfall. That's how this business works. It's not like a traditional job or career where you start at this and then you get a 4% increase and then you're making this and then you get another and you're just steadily moving up or steadily being promoted. This business isn't like that. This business is you work, you work, you work, consistency, consistency. You're not seeing anything yet. Nothing. Nothing's coming to fruition. Nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, so-and-so just contacted me. And oh my gosh, the girl in the store said she actually follows me on Instagram. Like all of a sudden things start coming together and it's really, really cool. So I just hope that you hang on to that point. So I was able to quit my full-time job. My husband was able to quit his full-time job. So now we're stay-at-home parents. I just want you to know there's a light at the end of that tunnel. And it's amazing, okay? So number one, and I said this on the National Week of Fall, but I have to say it again. Because when it comes to attraction marketing and attracting your dream team, the number one thing is you have to be that person that you would want to join. Okay, so really look at how you're positioning yourself and are you what would inspire you, okay? And so definitely that means being an inspiration. So what does that mean when we say be an inspiration? Well, when you think of someone that's an inspiration, it's someone that you can clearly see is doing the tough things. Maybe the, they're doing the things that you hate to do, you don't wanna do. They're doing the things that other people won't do because they're tough. Right. So maybe it's that they're like I said earlier that, you know, I was staying up super late and waking up super early to work my business. I was inspiring my own team by doing that because they could see and hear I was doing what was tough. And that was setting an example to people just that alone. OK, so making some tough decisions, you know, um, showing that you put in the work. You can't just preach on social media every day of what people should do and eating clean and eating healthy and this and that. If you are not showing progress, they're not going to believe that you are practicing what you preach. So in my everyday life, I'm constantly thinking like, am I taking the easy way out or am I doing what's tough? I think about that, whether it's in my business or even in my workouts. I mean, you know, even in my workout today and, and I'm doing my, you know, I'm lifting and I'm doing my last few reps and I'm like, you know, I've just, you know, just finished that 12th rep and it's like, it's tough. It's a struggle. And I'm like, most people would stop there. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to keep going. So it's that whole mentality of you can do more than you think you can do. So keep going. doesn't matter that I, I hit the 12 reps that you're supposed to hit. I wasn't completely, my muscles weren't completely shot yet. And I knew that. So I kept going. It's little things like that. I do that when I go for a run. You know, my, my dad always taught us that, um, you know, without that, without that struggle and without those failures and without that little bit of pain and discomfort, there is no success. 
So I, I learned that at a very young age and this business is no different. And I think that's one of the reasons why when I struggled early in my business, I, I almost didn't let it phase me. I mean, I, I don't remember being really upset at any point um, early in my business, just because like I wasn't checking my paychecks. I didn't like, I didn't get down about those things. I was constantly focusing on the positive. And believe me, there were lots of bad things that happened, lots of mistakes. I remember at that one time when I, um, I had a university room that I arranged to have just for presenting the business opportunity. So I promoted this for like two weeks. I got like, I don't know, 30 or so people to come promoting it over the course of a couple of weeks, you know, putting this PowerPoint together. And I decided that I was going to make all these um, three ring binders to give to the people that joined that night. Okay. So inviting everyone I knew to go to this event and I presented the business opportunity and I said, anyone who joins tonight gets one of these three ring binders. And my husband and I spent forever putting those binders together. And by the way, I don't know if I said, but the binders were what I called the coach reference manual. I had just copied and pasted everything I ever learned about coaching so far and put, put them <laughs> into a little booklet. Anyways, long story short, no one joined, okay? No one joined. Everyone walked out of that room. Some people said goodbye, but they all walked out of the room. I could have been so upset and, and given up after something like that and just said, I clearly, I suck at this. And here's the other thing, you guys, I do not like public speaking. It's not in my wheelhouse at all. So that was like huge anxiety for me to do that in the first place. So long story short, I know now what I did wrong was I didn't follow up with those people afterwards. I shouldn't have expected them to join that night. People don't join the first time you present the business opportunity to them. You have to have follow-ups. Hopefully you listen to my national wake up call. Um, on Monday because I talked about that because nothing happens without the follow-ups. I did end up following up with like a couple people that I really was in touch with a lot and one of them ended up joining and now she's one of my diamonds and killing it. But I should have followed up with every single one of those people. They took time out of their night and time away from their families to be there. Of course they had interest. I should have followed up with them. I could have, by this time I should have signed up all of those people. I just didn't follow up. So huge, huge, huge mistake. But that's part of being an inspiration is doing the tough things, just like putting yourself out there, going against the grain, doing what other people are not willing to do. And that's part of being inspiration. And that shows people that you are setting yourself apart from others. And people want to join a winning leader, a winning team. And when you do those tough things, that's the way they perceive that and, and it's the way they should perceive it. Okay, so number two is to, wait, let me go back to the first one of, of <laughs> being someone you want to join. Also, you have to be relatable. You have to be relatable. I mean, I one thing about Mindy Wender, um, number one, she was always going above and beyond. Like, you know, I was just talking about doing 12 reps and I ended up doing 16, you know, another example of that is Mindy Wender when I would say, okay guys, as a team, we need to be introducing the business opportunity to three to five people every single week. And every week we had to report in the names of those people every single week and every single week, Mindy Wender came through with 10 at least. And right there, even though she, I don't think she had any kind of big rank at that point, nothing like that. She was a newer coach. And right there, um, I had, I don't want to say red flags because that's, what's the opposite of red flags? Hot pink flags went off, like, you know, confetti. It was like, oh my gosh, perfect. She gets it. You go above and beyond the minimums. You don't try and hit the minimums. You go above and beyond the minimums. She gets it. Um, but the other thing about Mindy Wonder, I was going to say, she's very relatable. She's so relatable. Just being really real and down to earth and being compassionate, being trustworthy, being honest. You know, not pretending like you like you love every single program that Beachbody puts out and every single product and everything, everything. When you're honest and say, you know what, this is not my favorite, or actually I would buy this from GNC instead, or just being honest. That's how you build trust with people, okay? And, and that's just really, really key in attracting the right types of people. And looking your best, okay? That's another part of, you know, being someone you would want to join. Now, um, it's, it doesn't mean you always have to have a bunch of makeup on or have a you know, perfect outfit on or anything like that. I'm just saying, put your best foot forward. Your 
especially nowadays that people are more familiar with Beachbody coaching, they're looking at who they want to join. And I'd be, I'd be lying if I said that they aren't actually prejudging based on how you look. If you look like you haven't showered in a week and um, you don't care about yourself, they might choose someone who looks like they do care. You know, so some of that does matter. I mean, this is marketing, you guys. And so it, it's not like you have to have a certain look. It's not like you have to be, you know, gorgeous or anything like that. It's just that you have to look like you care about how you position yourself and how you um, respect yourself. Um, so number two is to offer something of value for free. So of course, if you follow any of my sister's training, that's like a premium. Okay, so one of the ways that I'm constantly attracting a like-minded network, which hopefully some of those people will be part of my team, is through my freemium, which is an ebook. It's a, a food inspiration ebook. So that um, didn't take much work to put together at all. In fact, all I did was hire someone, and I know not everyone has the money to do this, but you can really do it inexpensively. Um, at the time, it was elance.com, but now it's called upwork.com. But anyways, I just went on elance.com. I created an account. I went in there and I posted a job and I said, I need someone to grab the last, I think it was uh, 50 food pictures on my Instagram account, put them in an ebook, e make them look pretty, use my captions as the captions with each picture, take out anything that seems totally irrelevant, take out the hashtags and send it to me and give it to me in a mobile form and in a, um, you know, for the, uh, for the desktop form. Boom. I mean, this woman did it like in two weeks. It was nothing. And it was cr content I already had out there anyway. And my list builds while I sleep, you guys. While every morning I wake up, I've got new people who have opted in and given me their email address. And, and they click on it. They want to be a part of my um, newsletter. And so my list, I'm attracting like-minded people every single day and even while I sleep. You know, you've got to be offering something for free that helps you build your list. And so what I do is you have to leverage that list. So every single week, I just send them an email, sometimes two, that's just helpful content. And again, it's just content that I've already posted somewhere else, maybe on my like page or on my personal page. So I didn't have to recreate that content. I've already created it for some other format and they're getting it in an, in an email. So I just make, give it more of an email feel and send that out. And it's always something really quick with a picture. And so they're constantly getting content that is relatable. And then every now and then, I invite them to a challenge group or I invite them to a coach sneak peek or a backstage pass, okay? So that's that whole concept of jab, 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 hook. Um, is that Gary Vaynerchuk? I'm trying to think now. I think it's Gary Vaynerchuk that, that wrote jab, 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 hook. Anyway, that's that whole concept that you're constantly giving, giving, giving value and then every now and then the hook is just the invite okay so you have to be offering something for free give people a reason to to follow you so if you have a new like page give them a reason to go over to your like page don't just say hey guys go over to my like page and like on it give them a reason have a contest have a giveaway do do something to you know think to yourself would i take the time to do this you know always be putting yourself in other people's shoes number three uh, plant seeds daily. So I'm not going to go into detail on this one because I just did that on the National Wake Up Call. So if you can listen to that, if you haven't yet, I went through five simple ways that you can be planting seeds every single day. And believe me, over time, that messaging compounds in people's lives. And um, it might be the you know 20th time someone has heard you say that you're going to do a sneak peek or a backstage pass or whatever, but on that particular day, they're like, I need to do this. I need to message her. And like I said on the National Wake Up Hall, even though sometimes those posts get totally low traction, you still have to do them because sometimes just the right person is going to see it. But you've got to be planting those seeds daily. So those seeds, the five things real quick were your posts. Um, number one was your post. Number two are your challenge group members and connecting with them and planting seeds with them. Number three was your inbox messages, just with that list of people that you've known, known all your life, just connecting with them, planting seeds with them. And number four 
planting seeds by doing your mass invite. So even though you might post on social media about a sneak peek, you're actually planting, you're, it's, a, it's an invite, but you're actually planting seeds for a whole bunch of other people. A whole bunch of other people that happen to see that, it might be their first time they've seen it and you've just planted that seed in their head now that there's this business opportunity. So even though they may not like on that post, they certainly aren't gonna comment on it or message you, they, you planted a seed. And now all of a sudden you're on their radar and they're gonna be watching your posts. They're gonna be watching to see how you behave. Are you being salesy? Are you being pushy? Are you acting desperate? Now they're watching everything you do because they're thinking in their head, is this something I would ever wanna do? Could I do this? So they're watching all of that. So you're actually planting seeds with that too. And then your results. Your results with your programs are definitely a part of um, planting seeds. So number four, is position yourself with confidence on social media. Okay, now this was really, really hard for me to do in the beginning because like I said, I wasn't on social media and then once I was, I really wanted to just not have a profile picture up. I didn't want to put myself out there. I don't like the camera. I don't like any of that. And so it really kind of freaked me out. But I had to just get over it. I mean, it was just, it was just kind of immature on my part. Um, I hadn't been through a lot of personal development yet to realize, like, get over yourself. Like, who cares? You know, people are going to judge. People might criticize. I know my intentions are good. I know what I'm about. I know what I offer. I know I'm being honest. I know what I, what I have to offer other people need. And so I had to get confidence. And so if you don't have that confidence, of course, listen to my sister's podcast on uh, the Shaleen some great podcasts on confidence um, every day as you get ready or on your commute or whatever but you've got to gain that confidence and just get over it and position yourself with confidence so one of the ways that you can do that on social media are with your visuals with your images so your profile picture for one needs to show your face okay and I think my profile picture now is probably the most close-up I've ever had um, over the, like my first one was like this far away and then maybe a, a year later it was like this far away, but always like with a hat on. So now finally I'm like here in the camera. It took me a while, but the faster you can get over that, the better. You've got to have a smiling picture, profile picture, and your cover banner needs to look professional. In fact, Raina's is awesome. I checked that out and I don't know if you've changed it recently, but last I saw it, it was awesome. I thought, see, she gets it. She's positioning herself with confidence, okay? You don't get the feeling that if you join Raina, that she's gonna be like, ah, you know, I just, I don't know what to tell you, I don't really know, I don't know much, I really kinda, I'm not good at this. You don't get that feeling at all. You get that feeling as soon as you go to her page that she's going to embrace you and she, she knows some things, right? She's gonna teach you some things. So position yourself with confidence. Um, make sure that like when you do your your posts on social media, whether it's Instagram or Facebook or Pinterest. Um, I, I don't know about you, Raina, but I, I think about the visual first and then I think about my caption because I know the most important thing is that visual. That picture is the most important thing. They're not going to read the caption if the picture doesn't catch their eye. So here's what I do, um, and some may do this differently, but I'm constantly taking pictures, selfies, pictures of my food, just like if I'm sitting down and I just feel like that looks, the leggings look cool, or I don't know, anything. I'm just constantly taking pictures, and I don't use a whole bunch of them. I don't use it all, but it's like I've got this library of visuals, and I can work with them. Maybe I want to make it black and white. Maybe I want to um, reposition it, and I can put words here, whatever, but I, it's got a, I've got a library of photos that I can work with so that when I have that great thought, I might be taking a shower or working out or whatever, and I'm like, I really need to I really need to address this with people. Like I really feel like people need to hear this message. Then I go in my phone and I look for a visual that matches it. That's what I do a lot of times. Now every now and then I don't, but a lot of times I take good thoughts and then I match them with a visual. So the visual might not be a picture I took today. It might be a picture I took two days ago. Okay, but that has worked for me because that ensures that my visual is good. 
and my caption is good, but I definitely have to have that good visual because sometimes you have the greatest thought ever, but you don't have a good visual. So you can't just like put that thought up there and not have a good picture with it. Um, so number five is to invest in your personal development. That's one tough decision that I did too, is that um, I went to a couple seminar seminars that I could not afford to go to. Like I went to Brian Tracy's and um, I mean, that was, that was a, a tough decision because that was expensive for us big time. And I just remember that, you know, my sister was like, oh my gosh, you're going to gain so much for it. You're an entrepreneur now. You need to think like this. And I gained so much by going to that seminar. Now I'm not saying you have to go to every seminar. I'm going to Shalene's Smart Success next week. So if any of you are going, I'll see you there. Um, and I've gone to Smart Success every year. But audio, you know, the podcast, get a new book. You've got to be doing your personal development. Now, I'm not very good at being consistent about reading. So for me, it's audio. Um, you know, listening to the podcast is definitely a big one for me. Number six is to invest in your marketing. Again, this is, even though social media is really about being real, you do have to market you. You do have to. And so if that means maybe you need to go, um, you know, invest in some lighting. And one thing I had to invest in that was tough was an iPhone. I had an Android and not that there's anything wrong with Android, but I knew if I had an iPhone, I could do iMovie and I knew I needed to do videos. So I wasn't up for an upgrade. I think I had to pay like $600 or whatever and get that friggin' iPhone. And I'm so glad I did because my business just like took off once I was able to do these videos and make them so quickly because of iMovie. Um, but I had to make some tough decisions to invest in my marketing and getting that iPhone was a part of that and, and, and getting some new um, workout wear and that's kind of fun and, um, you know, lighting and, and different things like that. You, you know, this is a business like any other business. It's not just going to come to you. You got to attack it. Okay. So number seven is to start developing a team culture. Now, everyone is, every leader is a little bit different in what they recommend when it comes to um, like giving yourself a team name. I, I think everyone's philosophy is different and Raina, I don't know your philosophy. Um, my opinion is as soon as possible. Like whatever you feel that, that you, you stand for, and that your team is going to stand for, like even if you only have one team member, figure out your team name and start developing that team culture because even your customers are kind of in an in a indirect kind of a way, they're part of your team, they're part of your business, you know? So give yourself a team name and start developing that, um, or positioning yourself and developing that culture. So I say make a team name as soon as possible. You can always change it. It's not like it's some official thing. But, you know, have tank tops made, especially if you do have a team. Um, you know, I have it where, you know, my, my team members can just, they can buy the tank tops themselves that, you know, any size they want, any color they want, they can just get them. And by the way, I did that through a company called Big Frog. And they just, they have your t-shirt set up and people can just order them. And so you're not, you know, constantly shipping uh, t-shirts. And, you know, having maybe a logo made or having graphics made. I mean, there's lots of stuff you can just do yourself using Canva.com. Canva.com. That's a really cool software. Or even um, PicMonkey. I don't really use PicMonkey, but I know a lot of people do, and it's, and it's awesome. Uh, but having, you know, graphics made with your team name on it. So your team name, you know, when you think of branding, it needs to be everywhere. So your team name needs to be on you know, shout outs that you do. And um, like when I do my success club shout out, you know, it's, there's a background thing that says team hardcore. Um, so really promoting not only uh, what you offer and promoting a lifestyle, but promoting the community and the team that you offer. Because people want to be a part of something and they want to see what does that look like? You know, do they feel like they could fit in? Um, and also, you know, developing that team culture, it's not just about how you promote it or how you market it, how it looks. Um, it's also about developing that, that uh, camaraderie um, amongst the team. And so, you know, I'm sure you guys have like a Facebook group. And, you know, another thing obviously is to do team challenges or team contests. Um, I've done before, I've done, I had used to do a whole bunch of different clean eating 
groups for my team where, um, and I didn't even do these for my customers, I only did them for my team, where every single day in the group, we had to take a picture of every single thing we ate. So even if it was like, you know, a, a couple of pieces of my son's French toast or whatever, you had to take a picture of it. And at the end of the day, you had to make a collage of everything you ate, um, just so that you could literally see, you know, did I eat clean today? Did I eat enough today? And that was just a really, really fun challenge. And then we always would have like a sweaty selfie too. Um, but just like, you know, and I'm about to do a shake and run uh, challenge for my team. So just things to get the team involved, right? Because you guys, and I said this on the National Wake Up Call too, but you know, some people are on your team and you think that they're just discount coaches, when in reality, they just feel completely out of the loop. They don't feel like they can maybe be a part of this and do this the way that you and the other team members do because now they kind of feel like an outsider. So one way to bring them under your wing and make them feel like an insider and make them feel a part of the team and actually you could develop some motivation with them within them to want to do this business. So like get them involved in like a challenge group or a contest of some type. Get the, use their skills. I mean there's so many like super intelligent people that are just discount coaches right now that would actually love to do this business but they just don't see how they would fit in so help them see that um so number eight and i'm almost done is to be innovative hold on i gotta grab something real quick my notes over here okay so number eight is to be innovative show vision and leadership okay so what i'm talking about here is one thing that i feel is my role as a leader is to constantly break new ground. Constantly break new ground. And that is one thing that I think definitely I can tell uh, on my team who is truly acting like a leader because they are doing things that I've never done, that I don't know any other coach has done that I think is just awesome. I'm like, that's such a great idea. Why did I not think of that? That's perfect. And, and they're just, thinking outside the box. So if you feel like you're constantly trying to only duplicate, yes, of course, all, everyone should duplicate, but you have to make things your own. And to be a leader, you have to also think outside the box. And so sometimes that means going against the grain in some ways, okay? And, and just doing something that is so different from what everyone else is doing. Um, so that's a part of you know being a leader. For example, like one of the things that I started doing, like I said, um, kind of pretty early on was I created that coach reference manual. And like I said, I just started from day one. I started, you know, collecting information and answers and things that I Googled and YouTube videos I'd watched and everything. I just started collecting it into a document and creating this, what I ended up calling a manual. So that once I started to you know, attract and, and connect with new people that I thought would make great coaches, that was an appeal to them. But I said, once you join, I'm gonna send you a coach reference manual. Now I just email it to them. But that was, that was an appeal to some people that I had something to offer that maybe someone else didn't have. But it was also something that gave them assurance that they were going to be supported. But I, had to, I created that myself. No one told me to do that. You gotta start doing something that no one told you to do but you wish you had it. That's the best way to be innovative is to think of things you wish you had or things that you'd be like, gosh, it would help me so much if I could just whatever. Um, recently, I was thinking, gosh, it would be so great if I could just put in a picture visually of what it looks like in this business from like day one to like six figure income. If I could kind of put that in a visual, and so I did. I. I put it into a visual and who knows, maybe it helps some people, maybe it doesn't, but doing those kinds of things, anything that you think will help your team members and, and it makes you, obviously, it puts you in that leadership role. So even if you don't, let's say you don't do your own team calls, let's say you just refer them to Raina's calls, um, you can still act as a leader in so many other ways. Like I said, doing the challenge groups, you know, coming up with different tools for your team to train your team. So number nine is to branch out into another social media platform. Okay, so that's one thing that I've definitely done in my business over time is 
master a new social media platform. If you want to continually grow, you have to continually be trying to master another social media platform. I always say start with one or two, but then start moving into another, okay? Because there's usually a whole bunch of other people there that, that you can meet and, um, and connect with that could be potential coaches. So branch out. And you know, you guys don't overthink it when it comes to branching out into a new social media platform. You know, there's always going to be some great YouTube video you can watch to learn more about that platform. My sister obviously has tons of trainings on the different uh, social media platforms. Um, but usually, even if it's like a, having your own YouTube channel or having, you know, opening up your Instagram account for the first time, I mean, creating an account for anything is so easy. You just have to do it, okay? And then start committing to doing like one thing with it every single day. And then lastly, and this is a no brainer, but be consistent, okay? Because when it comes to social media, because everything is moving so fast, you can get on someone's radar really fast and you can fall off their radar really fast, okay? It goes both ways. So if you wanna be on the positive end of that, you have to be consistent. And the tough thing about that is that things are gonna come up in your life that make your life really chaotic, really hard. That happens to all of us. I hope none of you think that, you know, I just, I haven't had any struggles and life has just been easy and, you know, of course not. You have to learn how to work through all of those things that come up. It's not always gonna be easy. I mean, last year we had my husband's brother nearly died. Matt and I were in the hospital every single day for almost a month straight while he was in a coma. Now he made it, but I continued to do what I could while I was at the hospital. I wanted to be present and I, you know, would, would reschedule things as needed because family first, of course, but I worked through that, you guys. And, you know, that's a part of owning a business is you need to obviously sometimes reprioritize things a little bit, but you can't just drop it because you've got people who are counting on you, you know, and even if it's just that you are, um, you know, inspiring other people or leading challenge group members or whatever, but you do have people that are counting on you. So you can't just drop them because life gets, life gets difficult. Fortunately with this business, it's not a 40 hours a week type thing. So of course, you're going to have time here and there throughout your day to get things done. It's just a matter of how badly do you want this, you know? So you've got to stay consistent so that you're not falling off of people's radar. And one thing that I did right off the bat, like I said, is I started building a team. And I knew, because I'm the type of person, I like to build in accountability for myself. And by building a team, that built in accountability for myself because I knew I'd be fine with letting myself down. I would not be fine with letting down the people I had added to my team. Not good with that at all. And I knew that if I immediately started building a team, it would force me to get my act together and learn as much as I possibly could for them, right? To help lead them. So building that accountability. So anyways, that last one was be consistent. So Raina, that's all I have for this evening. Do you have any questions? questions. I think so. I think we have some questions and I am going to tell everyone to make sure they either put questions in the chat or on our team page. If, I hope you don't mind asking a few. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Open it up. Okay. Um, we'll go fast. I'll keep you, I'll get you in bed by 10 o'clock. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> um, so first I have a couple questions. Um, first one I want, I'm curious as to what platform, what social media platform is your favorite? And Bye. Um, oh, that's tough. I would have to say probably Instagram is my favorite. Um, but kind of Facebook. Those are two of my favorites. Um, I'm definitely on YouTube, but not as much there. But I will say this. I There was a year, a few years ago, where myself and my team members it was like our goal to do all these youtube videos and i so i did do those and those youtube videos still to this day bring me prospects so i really probably need to do more with youtube and or periscope um but since i 
don't necessarily like, you know, being live on video and all that as much as just posting pictures or posting workout videos that I like that a lot more. Um, but yeah, I would say probably Instagram is my favorite. Okay. I love it. Totally curious. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you still do challenge groups? I do. Yeah. Like right now, in fact, if you go to my Instagram or my like page, it's not on my personal page, it's on my like page. Um, I posted about a shake and run challenge. Um, so that was like uh, Sunday. I think I posted about that maybe Saturday. Anyways, um, I try and do different kinds of challenges. And so the shake and run is where, um, they would have to be drinking Shakeology and commit to running at least three times a week and lifting. I think I said at least three times a week. Um, yeah, so that's a challenge group that I'm doing for my customers. And then I'm running the same challenge group side by side for my team. Okay. That's a fun idea mm -hmm. to do them yeah. simultaneously. I like that. Yep. That way I just, you know, I'm doing the same post for both of them. Yeah. But with the team, it's that team culture and they know each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's fun. And they can even talk about business at the same time. So I've learned that I like to kind of keep that separate, that that works better. My customers in one and then my coaches in the other. Yeah. Okay. Very, very cool. Yep. Um, what business tool has been the biggest game changer for you in your business where you saw the most traction? Um, business tool. Hmm. That's a I know what you mean by that. I would have to say doing Facebook ads okay. and, and boosting posts. Now it's still tricky and there's still lots that I, I feel like I need to learn. Um, sometimes boosts do really well. Sometimes the ad does well. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, I feel like Facebook is still finicky and I don't maybe fully understand. Maybe I'm missing some things because yeah. sometimes, like I said, sometimes it doesn't go well. Uh, but there have been times where I was like, oh my gosh, I just had, I just had a record month and it, that Facebook ad is what propelled it. Like in terms of adding to my team. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, I've played a little bit with ads, um, but again, I feel like there's something I'm missing, like the secret to Facebook that I don't know how to, you know, get a good one that like really takes off. So, right. Well, I mean, I'll just say because I, like I hold nothing back. I tell everything. Yeah. Um, when when I do an ad and I actually pick my target market and I think it's like this is gonna be dead on, it'll sometimes just completely bomb. Yeah. Yet if I do and when I pay for something it's usually about the business opportunity i don't usually do it for challenge groups or just a random post it's about the business opportunity so about you know you want more info on it or it's a sneak peek or it's a backstage pass something like that uh, but if i do a boosted post i usually and i just boost it to the people who have liked my page i get the best results from that but if you watch any tutorial from like any social media guru they tell you do not boost yeah. But I keep getting good results with that. So it's a good thing. It works. Yeah. It's, it's, so, it's working. Keep yeah. going, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So I have this, Brett always says that people who are really successful, he wants to always ask them two things. And the first one is, what is the one thing that you regret doing in your business or wish that you would have done differently? as a new coach starting out. And then the other half of that is one thing, what's one thing that you're glad you did and you wouldn't change? Okay. Um, okay. So I guess one thing that, I mean, I don't regret anything cause I feel like everything is just a learning experience. Yeah. Like I've made tons of mistakes, like funny, funny, bad mistakes, but I, I can't say I really regret them because I, they're such learning experiences. Now I can say to my coaches, oh my gosh, don't do that. Like that was such a huge mistake. Um, but I mean, one of the things definitely was when I started my business, I did not know, and it's still a struggle to this day, but I did not know how to get them started. And, you know, now we, we've learned all, you know, do these trainings and to give people example scripts and, you know, all these other things that I just didn't, I trained my team as best I could when I started, but looking back, it totally was not enough. And once it's been too long, they lose motivation. 
Yeah. So even though I think I had a lot more things figured out by like six months in, I already lost motivation from a lot of them. So some of those initial people, you know, I feel like to this day could possibly be millionaires had they, had I maybe got them started right better, but I just didn't know what to do. We have so many more resources now. I mean, gosh, now anyone joining my team, they can plug their team into all of my trainings. Boom, they've got it. But I, I just didn't have that. I get that. And then what was the other question? There was another one. Um, what did you do that you wouldn't change? What do you think you just did good and suggest everyone else does it? I, I started building a team immediately. Yeah. Immediately. I, that's one thing that I'm like, even though I didn't do it perfectly and I made lots of mistakes, I would not change that at all. I certainly um, had a decent sized team before I ever made my first sale. Like I, I never made a lot of sales. I still don't make a lot of sales, but I've always believed in building fitness business leaders, like helping other moms like myself be at home with their, with their families and be able to live the life that they want to live and be completely financially secure and independent and do it with a business that helps other people in fitness and health. Like what could be better? I love that. I love that. I always tell, or I, I've told my team this before, but I always tell everybody else, like every success club point I have is from a coach, not from selling people something, you know, it's yeah. from recruiting. Just That's so, on, so same here. In fact, um, I don't very often get like mentioned on the national wake up call as like a top challenge pack salesperson, but I did one week. Um, and I called Beachbody. I was like, I just want to let you know, there's been a mistake. Like I, I don't sell a lot of challenge packs. So they go, no, it was because you were also a top recruiter and all your coaches got challenge packs. I'm like, Oh yeah. I never even think of it that way. Like I, I just don't, I, I just, great. I've got new leaders, you know, potential leaders. That's funny. Yeah. Um, okay. What is your favorite personal development book or audio that you think would be helpful starting out? Um, gosh, I have lots of favorite personal development books that I love. Um, one of the first that I read, it's been years now, but it was the magic of thinking big. And, and that did help me think big. Um, but I also love the slight edge. I love the compound effect. I love GoPro. Um, and then as far as podcasts, I of course love my sister's podcast <laughs> and that's the truth. That's the truth. Like, I mean, she's really the only podcast that I listen to. That's a non-biased opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay. Another one to balance off that, which, I mean, I know you can't probably pick just one, but of Shaleen's podcasts, which would you recommend? Oh God. Oh I my gosh. <laughs> There's, I don't think I could possibly think of just one. Like she, she has so, so many. And I, I couldn't differentiate when she said, like, I, I remember certain things that she has said that have been just really good, but I couldn't tell you like which podcast it came from. Yeah. Um, so unfortunately, I don't think I can answer that. One. You just subscribe and start watching. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep. Um, I'll say, I'll do a couple more. What uh, does a power hour look like for you typically? Well, in your power hour, you have to do the tough things first. And I think personally, the toughest thing for most people is introducing the business opportunity to someone right away. Like that needs to be first. Um, I usually am figuring out pictures or videos. Um, and I might not use it right then and there because I might actually think of the caption later or put together the video later, or whatever. But um, so you know, presenting the business opportunity and connecting with people, you know, on social media. And that also includes connecting with my, my groups that I have going. Usually I have, you know, my, a couple different groups for my coaches that I have going. I have a push to diamond group going. Um, and then, um, you know, connecting with the people who have inbox messaged me. So doing that kind of stuff on Facebook and then doing some kind of visual, like a video or a picture. So that I've got something, a couple things, hopefully to post that night, especially. I try and make sure I have something to post at night. Okay. I like it. Yeah. And I do the same thing as you were talking about having like your, just a stock of photos in your yeah. phone. I've got the same thing. Yeah. You mine and it's like 
nothing interesting. It's just like saved posts and stuff like ready to go at any moment. So it's kind of fun. Yes. Yeah. And I constantly am screenshotting ideas. Yeah. Like if I'm, if I'm like looking at social media and, and another, you know, fitness guru or anything that just inspires me, I'll screenshot it just for the idea. And yeah. another thing I do is I have a lot of different Instagram accounts that I follow that are great quotes. And so I screenshot quotes all the time and I change the words to fitness, something relating to fitness or something that will appeal to fitness fans. Yeah. Add them to a selfie. <laughs> yes. And done. <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, I'll ask one more, and you kind of already answered this, but I'll ask it anyway just so that person doesn't think I'm leaving them out. But um, she said, I'm having a hard time attracting people outside of the business on Instagram. How, any tips on how to recruit or attract non-fitness professionals to your page? Attract non-fitness professionals, or is she saying attract non-coaches? I think non-coaches is what she meant. Yeah, yeah, because I think yeah. I think you want people who are into fitness yeah. to be attracted for sure. Um, but I definitely know that a lot of coaches are getting too many other coaches. Well, you know, I think that when people first of all using hashtags that the coaches aren't using, that's a big one right there. Um, but also doing things on your Instagram that the other coaches aren't doing. Like I know I can go to someone's Instagram and look at their, their gallery of photos. And I can tell with some people instantly that they're a coach and because there's so many pictures of them with Shakeology and there's so many pictures of their DVDs and there's so many, it's just beach body Shakeology over and over. And so a lot of people will see that and they just think, if they're going to follow you, that you're going to try and sell them on something. So I think that you have to be, um, you know, just not so in your face with that kind of stuff so that they're not afraid to follow you. And they, they do, you know, they, put, they found you from the hashtag, they see your photos and they're like, yes, I want to follow this fitness person. Like that's their first thought. I love that. My mother-in-law is even sitting here creeping in the background and she's like, I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's so true. And I always tell people like, instead of plastering like P90X is on sale and all this beach buddy stuff, which people are completely turning away from, you've got to yeah. just share your journey and talk about your kids and about your favorite makeup and you know, just all that stuff all the time. Right. Just talk to different people. So. Right. Like, I mean, you can have a picture of a shake, but don't, you know, necessarily put the Shakeology words and like Shakeology and like cafe latte. I mean, it just, it's like, bye, bye, bye. And, and people, you know, they found you, but they are quickly walking away from that. Yeah. I totally agree. Yep. Um, I think that's all the, I know there's probably more and they can listen to the recording again and get all the questions answered. But I think that's probably all the questions we have right now. And I just, I've got literally pages of post-its of notes. So I know I had a lot of takeaways and when I had a lot of takeaways, I know that my team did too. So I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day or out of your night, especially at nine o'clock where you are to do this for us. So it means a lot and I really appreciate it. And I know that we all, you know, learned a lot from it. So thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Really my pleasure to be on. Thanks. Have a great night, you guys. Thanks. And I'll let everybody else go and I'll post the recording on our team page in about seven minutes. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Bye.